bit of a disturbing article here from my perspective at least is the title of it from Forbes. I'll link it down below. Biden admin urges Supreme Court to let cops enter homes and seize guns without a warrant. Nick Sibelia, senior contributor. The U.S. Supreme Court on Wednesday will hear, so it was um, a couple days ago, hear oral argument in uh, Coniglia v. Strom, the case that could have sweeping consequences for policing, due process, and mental health with the Biden admin and attorneys generals from nine states urging the high court to uphold warrantless gun confiscation. But what could ultimately become a major Fourth Amendment case began with an elderly couple spat over a coffee mug, which was um, pretty interesting. I heard about this story in, in reference to this. In August 2015, 60-year-old Edward uh, Coniglia joked to Kim, his wife of 22 years, that he didn't use a certain coffee mug after his brother-in-law had used it because he might catch a case of dishonesty. I mean, that's kind of funny. That quip quickly spiraled into an hour-long argument. Growing exhausted from the bickering, Edward stormed into his bedroom, grabbed an unlo unloaded handgun, and put it on the kitchen table in front of his wife. With the flair for the dramatic, <clears throat> he then asked, why don't you just shoot me and get, and, uh, get me out of my misery? Perhaps unsurprisingly, the tactic backfired and the two continued to argue. Eventually, Edward took a drive to cool off, but when he returned, their argument flared up once again. This time, Kim decided to leave the house and spend the night in a motel. The next, get, <clears throat> the next day, Kim phoned home. No answer. Worried, she called the police. Oh, God. Never call the fucking cops if you're worried about somebody's mental health okay that's just a bad idea we see time after time when this happens cops go in guns are blazing somebody end up being fucking killed for supposed well check or wellness check don't fucking do that don't do that to anybody don't especially don't do that to your friend or loved one don't call the police if you're worried about their mental health because there's a good chance they could get fucking shot or arrested or brutalized in some way, okay? Don't do that. Christ. She called the police in Cranston, Rhode Island and asked them to perform a well check on her husband and to escort her home. When they arrived, officers spoke with Edward on her deck. According to an incident report, he seemed normal, was calm for the most part, and even said he would never commit suicide. I mean, again, it all seemed like a joke, like, I, I don't know. However, none of the officers asked Edward any questions about the factors relating to his risk of suicide, risk of violence, or prior misuse of firearms. Edward had no criminal record, no history of violence or self-harm. In fact, one of the officers later admitted he did not, quote, <clears throat> did not consult any specific psychological or psychiatric criteria or medical professionals for his decisions that day. And again, why the fuck cops are not qualified in any way to check up on somebody's mental health for fuck's sake they're fucking cops okay that should be pretty well understood i would think still police were convinced that edward could hurt himself and insisted he need to head to a local hospital for a psychiatric eval after refusing insisting that his mental health wasn't their business it's not edward agreed only after police falsely promised so they lied to him they wouldn't seize his guns while he was gone. Compounding the dishonesty, the police then told Kim that Edward had consented to the confiscation. Jesus Christ. And then, so they lied to him, like, yeah, just go to the hospital. We're not, we're not going to fuck with your guns. And then they lied to his wife, saying, yeah, Edward said, said we could take his guns. No, no worries. <clears throat> Believing the seizures were approved by her husband, Kid the, Kim led the officers to the two handguns the couple owned which were promptly seized, even though Edward was immediately discharged from the hospital. Police only returned the firearms after he filed a civil rights lawsuit against, so to get his fucking guns back, he had to sue the cops who took these guns under false pretenses by lying to his wife, saying that Edward, in fact, gave them permission, which he didn't. He didn't. Critically, when police seized the guns, they didn't claim it was an emergency or to prevent imminent danger because it was an emergency. There was no imminent danger situation instead the officers argued their actions were a form of community caretaking i mean the, the shit that cops are able to get away with in the united states is 
just mind boggling. If we're going to take guns away from anybody, take them away from the fucking cops, take them away from the fucking military, okay? <clears throat> First created by the Supreme Court nearly 50 years ago, the community caretaking exception was designed for cases involving impounded cars and highway safety on the grounds that police are often called the car accidents to remove nuisances like um, operable vehicles on public roads. Both the district and appellate court upheld the seizures as reasonable under the community caretaking exceptions. In deciding uh, Coniglia's case, the First Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals acknowledged that the doctrine reached outside uh, the motor vehicle context is ill-defined. Nevertheless, the court decided to extend that doctrine to cover private homes, ruling, excuse me, ruling that the officers did not exceed proper province in their community care. To, I mean, Jesus Christ, what what the fuck was that judge smoking on? I want some of that. <clears throat> Siding with law enforcement, usually never a good good sign when that happens. First Circuit noted that a police officer must act as a master of all emergencies who is expected to provide an infinite variety of services to preserve and protect community safety. Again, that's defund police and best in programs of community uplift that actually benefit people, okay? Cops shouldn't be fucking performing wellness checks. That is just fucking bonkers, okay? <clears throat> By letting police officers operate without a warrant, the community caretaking exception is designed to give police elbow room to take appropriate action. Again, I don't fucking, I wouldn't trust the cop to fucking wash my car. I'm sorry, I'm not going to trust them in community caretaking. And this type of shit will always be used against, especially uh, people who are, critical of the U.S. empire, critical of capitalism, speak out against white supremacy, speak out against police violence, etc. So people on the left broadly. In their opening brief for the Supreme Court, attorneys for Canigula warned that extending the community caretaking exemption to homes would be anathema to the Fourth Amendment because it would grant police a blank check to intrude upon the home. The fear is not unwarranted. In jurisdictions that have extended the community caretaking exception to homes, everything from loud music to leaky pipes have been used to justify warrantless invasion of the home. A joint amicus brief, which I think is, uh, yeah, more or less, uh, in, you know, obviously the ASLU is in support of this, by the ACLU, the Cato Institute, and the American Conservative Union. So obviously this reaches across the political spectrum when you have this brief ACLU, the Cato Institute, and the American Conservative Union, the, the two latter ones, obviously, pretty conservative organizations with the ACL being more kind of a liberal, democratic leaning, etc. I mean, for fuck's sake, this is very, very troubling. Even if you don't own a gun, this is still very, very disturbing, or should be, I would think. The ex expansion could also have perverse effects and uh, disincentivize, disincentivize people from calling for help. As a brief noted, when every interaction with police or request for help can become an invitation for police to invade the home, the most willingness of individuals to seek assistance when his most needed will suffer. And I guess so, I mean, we'll see what the Supreme Court rules in this case. I would hope if the su supposed Supreme Court justices actually um, you know, it's led by the conservative majority, you would think if they actually hold true to that, they would strike this down. We'll see. I obviously hope that's what happens. But in the first amicus brief before the court, the Biden admin glossed over these concerns and called on justices to uphold the first circuit's ruling, noting that the ultimate touched on the Fourth Amendment is reasonableness. Justice Department argued that warrants, <clears throat> excuse me, should be Presumptively acquired when a government official's action is objectively grounded in non-investigatory public interests, such as health or safety. Again, I don't fucking trust the cops for any of this shit, okay? We do not need to be giving them opportunities to intrude more into people's lives without a fucking warrant. That is disgusting. That hugely, hugely problematic goes against our constitutional rights. Ultimate question in this case is therefore not whether the respondent officer's actions fit with this some narrow warrant exception, the brief stated, but instead whether those actions were reasonable. No, not fucking reasonable. They fucking lied. They lied. Okay. God, 
Yeah, so there's the Biden Justice Department being uh, more dog shit, just like under Trump's. As a fail safe, the Justice Department also urges the Supreme Court to uphold the lower court ruling on qualified immunity grounds. It's fucking Biden supporting qualified immunity, ba basically making it impossible to hold police officers accountable when they fuck people over, which they do on a daily basis, especially communities of color and other marginalized groups. Arguing that the officer's actions did not violate any clearly established laws to render the officers individually liable in the damage his action. They fucking lied. They lied to the dude. They said, go to the hospital. We're not going to take your guns. Then they lied to his wife saying, yeah, your husband gave us permission to show us where the guns are. How? I mean, if, if you're in basically any other job, any other role besides a cop and you did fucked up shit like that, you would be held responsible as you should be. As cops should be. And Biden saying, no, no, they can lie, do whatever the fuck they want. We don't really give a shit. But the Biden admin, along with the courts, that have extended the community caretaking exceptions, overlook a key component of the Fourth Amendment, the security clause. After all, the Fourth Amendment opens with the phrase, the right of the people to be secure. And you're obviously not fucking secure if cops can come into your house, confiscate your gun or guns without a warrant. Wouldn't feel very secure with that situation, would you? In a meekest brief, the Institute for Justice noticed that to the founding a generation, secure did not simply mean the right to be spared an unreasonable search or seizure, but also involved harms attributable to the potential for unreasonable searches and seizures. Expanding the community caretaking exception to allow warrantless entries into people's homes on a whim, I mean, that is, that is fucking fascist. The cops tools of, of the state, tools of capitalism, tools of white supremacy can just, without a warrant, come in your house, take wherever the fuck they want. That is fucking disgusting. That is disturbing as fuck. And again, the cops, <laughs> they're not they're not our friends, okay? They're, again, tools of capitalism and white supremacy. Expanding the community caretaking exception to allow warrantless entries into people's homes on a whim, argued the... Um, Institute for Justice Brief invokes the arbitrary looming threat of general writs that so incited the framers and would undermine the right to pe for people to be secure in their homes. The IJ Brief further argued that extending the community caretaking exception to the home would flatly contradict the Supreme Court's prior ruling, so I obviously hope the Supreme Court would take that into account and strike this down as wholly unconstitutional, because it is, and deeply, deeply disturbing and highly authoritarian and fascist um, flatly contradict the Supreme Court's prior rulings, which has uh, only discussed community caretaking in the context of vehicle searches and seizures. Quite a bit different vehicle searches and seizures compared to somebody's fucking home. And again, I don't even know if I support the vehicle search and seizures part of that, but I digress. In those cases, the Animating purpose for the exception was to allow officers to remove damage or abandon vehicles that pose a risk to public safety. So that's obviously quite a bit different than giving cops the power to enter your home without a warrant and take whatever the fuck they want. By contrast, the IJ amicus asserted that justification is entirely absent when it comes to homes. The Fourth Amendment protects our right to be secure in our property, which means the right to be free from the fear that police will enter your house without a warning or authorization, which again, if this is upheld, would give them the exact right to do that, said Institute for Justice Attorney Joshua Windham. A rule that allows police to burst in your home without a warrant whenever they feel they're acting as community caretakers is a threat to everyone's security. Completely, completely agree. That is deeply, deeply disturbing on a number of levels. Wish I could say I'm surprised that the Biden administration is in support of this. But this, again, this motherfucker thought the issue or one of the ways to solve police violence, particularly police murdering and brutalize, brutalizing unarmed people of color, particularly black men in particular, was to give the police more funding and resources. So not a huge leap here that he wants cops to be able to enter people's homes without a warrant and take your guns or whatever else they find in there. Deeply, deeply disturbing. Let's all hope the fucking Supreme Court is on the right side of history on this issue and strikes it down as they should. 
like the video if you like the damn video subscribe for more content peace much love all part of the people